You need a frame for a project, but Canva just doesn't have what you're looking for. So today using PowerPoint and Canva, I will show you how to create custom frames. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go in and create whatever we want to have a frame out of. So for example, I am gonna use how I made my rotating wheel. So with this, I did, used a circle, I actually use two circles, but I only need one later. So let's go and do that over here. So the next step I'm going to use now is I'm going to get my line. What I want to do is get how thick I want it. So if you're doing something like an infographic or something where you only need four, you can do it. You can make as many sections as you want. But for this tutorial, I'm only going to make a four section one. So I'm going to hold my control key because I want my line to go completely out of my circle. Let me get the control key so it stops snapping to the edge. Make sure that is on zero. Honestly, I'm just going to tell you I should have my glasses on right now. So if it's a little wonky, sorry. Um, don't see very well at the moment. All right, so I get that. Let's line that up in the center like so. And after that, what I want to do now is I want to change these to white. Let's change that one to white. Change all. And there we go like that. And then I'm going to change this to black. Like so. So now I have my circle. That does not look like it's in the middle. Is it just me? There we go. Much better. So now what I want to do, because I don't want, you can have the whole pie if you want to. But if you don't want the whole pie, you want it to look like a ring. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my other back in the center and then you can choose the thickness of your wheel. You can make it thin, you can make it thick. That's just up to you. And then we'll make sure that it is centered. And then you're going to change that to white. So now that I got kind of what I want to do, I think it just needs a couple little bumps. Bump, 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 bump. Ah, much better. So now that I got what I want, what I'm going to do is if you are a free user, you have to do one extra step. If you are a pro user, when you go to download this, you should be able to already download it as a SVG. I'm not a pro user, I'm a free user. So what I have to do is download it as a PNG. So I'm gonna download it as a PNG. And while it's downloading, I'm gonna come over to this website called converto.co. So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my file. I'm going to go to, is this what I just did? Open this up. I'm going to convert it to SVG. Then I'm going to push convert. Now, while it is converting, what you can do is start setting up your PowerPoint. So you want to go into PowerPoint, get your blank presentation. Come on, Mr. PowerPoint. Let's go, let's go. And then what we want to do, we just want to delete oh, delete these little thingies here and get rid of these. And let's check and see where our Converto is. It's down converting. So now let's download that. So now I can go back into PowerPoint and I will make this bigger. I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to go to pictures. This device. It should pull up. And if you use Converto, let's go to my downloads. You'll see that this, this is the sign for your SVG. It'll say Microsoft Edge HTML document, but it's your SVG. So we're going to insert that into our project. So now that we're it's inserted into our project. We're going to go over to convert to shape. Once it is converted over to a shape, you're going to go into shape fill. You're going to go to picture. I usually just pull something out of stock images. While this is populating something, and I'll just pick anything random. It really doesn't matter. Let's go with that one. And we're going to insert that. And then once it is inserted, 
See, now that it is inserted, you're going to go into your file, save as, I do save as, and you want to ensure that this is a PDF, a PDF, and we'll put circle frame. I don't know how many, but it's going to be number five. And then I want to put it into not my OneDrive. I usually put it in my camera roll and I'm going to save it. And then it's going to take a hot minute to save. So while we're doing that, we will come back over to our picture and we can come down into here and we can go into uploads. We go upload our file and then we're going to go into the camera roll. When it starts to upload, it will upload into your projects. So we'll go over to our projects. We'll open this up and then you can come in here and size it. And then you can just come over to photos and now you can just start drop it in and you can move this you can move the sections you can do all kinds of stuff we'll just put random pictures in here and there you go and that is a custom frame now if you want to make a something from an element so let's see i did this dog So the problem with this one is it has color to it and you need it black and white. So the tip to do that is to go into edit image, go into dual tone, I use, is go down and I usually use maybe classic. Sometimes I'll use mono. Um, let's try mono and see what that does. Okay. And we'll put apply. And then once it applies, you'll see your slider come up here. Yes. I still use the old editor. And then I'm going to take the brightness down to zero, the contrast all the way up. And now you have a black image element now that you can do that. And you can go and use that process to make a frame that way if you want to use an element. The other thing you want to note too. So say you want to make like the one I have where the bubbles are or a, sh a bunch of shapes. So if you take a bunch of shapes and just randomly put them all over the place, like so, and you want to cre create a frame looking like that, the problem with this is, is it'll make individual frames. If you want to make a continuous frame, they have to be together. So they have to touch in some way. So you would have to do something more like this where they touch or you would have to put some kind of thin line in between them. So you would go and put, take a line and make it like as thin as possible. And then you would have to have a connector line to make them a single frame. So like if you saw the one I had in the front with all the circles, they have to touch. If I did that as individuals, then the problem is they would be individual frames, just like the one up here. So because they're not touching, they become individual frames in a pattern. If they are touching, then they become a singular frame. So you could do something like this, even though this is sloppy, but because they are, they are together like so, they will make a single frame. And I also wind up grouping them together before I download just as a little extra precaution. But that is in a nutshell how you create a custom frame using PowerPoint. And if you have any more questions, let me know. I'm glad to help you out. I love you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.